Here we're going to look at the Leave Insert Higher Level Project Max 2013 Sample Paper 2 Solutions. And here we're just going to look at question 1 and question 2, which are on probability and statistics. So in question 1, part A, we're told the random variable x has a discrete distribution. The probability that it takes a value other than 13, 14, 15 or 16 is negligible. Now, because it's discrete, it means it can only take on these values. It cannot take on values between these. If it could, then it would be a continuous distribution. So then here, in part A, we're asked to complete the probability distribution table below, and hence calculate e to the x, which is the expected value of x. Now, in this table, we're missing one of these probabilities. So for any probability distribution table, we should know the sum of the probabilities must sum up to 1. And mathematically, we can write this as sigma p equals 1. Now we're missing one of these probabilities, so we can just put that in as p. And if we add up these four probabilities, they have to add up to 1. So if we just solve this simple equation, p works out as 0.038. Next of all, then, we want to calculate the expected value of x. Now to calculate the expected value of x, this is calculated by summing the product of each of the random variables x by its corresponding probability. So it's 13 by 0 0.383 plus 14 by 0 0.575 plus 15 by 0 0.038 plus 16 by 0 0.004. Now mathematically we can write this as the expected value of x is sigma x times p. So if we multiply each of these out and sum up the totals, then the expected value of x gives us 13.663. Part B then, if x is the age in complete years on the 1st of January 2010 of a student selected at random from among all second year students in Irish schools, explain what e to the x represents. So e to the x is the expected value or a mean value. So here the expected value is the average age of the student selected at random from all second year students. Part C then. If 10 students are selected at random from this population, find the probability that exactly 6 of them were 14 years on the 1st of January 2010. Give your answer correct to three significant figures. So this is an example of a binomial distribution where we're going to have 10 trials and we want 6 successes. The probability of success in a single trial, here this will be the probability that a student is 14 years old. And from our probability distribution table, that value was 0 0.575. Now the binomial distribution formula is given in the maths and formula tables. As the probability of all successes, it's n choose r multiplied by p to the r times q to the n minus r. n is the number of trials, r is the number of successes, p is the probability of success in a single trial, q then would be the probability of failure in a single trial. So here, n is 10, r is 6, p is the probability of success in a single trial, which is 0 0.575, and then q is 1 minus p, so that's 1 minus 0 0.575, which gives 0 0.425. So if we substitute these values into this formula, and then using our calculator, this works out as 0 0.248 to three significant figures. Question two then, part A. Explain what is meant by stratus height sampling and cluster sampling. Your explanation should include a clear indication of the difference between the two methods and one reason why each method might be chosen instead of a simple random sample. So with stratified sampling, the population is first of all divided into groups which are called strata, so that the elements of each strata share some common characteristic, i.e. Uh, age groups or gender. A sample is then selected from each strata now, using a stratified sampling, this will achieve greater precision than a simple random sample. So this would be the advantages of using stratified sampling over simple random sampling. 
With cluster sampling, the population is divided into groups called clusters. Then a number of these clusters are then selected at random and all elements of those clusters are combined to form the random sample. Cluster sampling is a cheap, quick and easy sampling method. So again, that would be its advantage over simple random sampling. Part B then, a survey is being conducted of voters' opinions on several different issues. What is the overall margin of error of the survey at the 95% confidence? if it is based on a simple random sample of 1,111 voters. Now your margin of error is determined by the sample size. The larger the sample size, the smaller your margin of error. So the margin of error is calculated using plus or minus 1 over the square root of n. So here, if we just substitute in 1,111 in for n, this gives plus or minus 0 0.03 as a decimal. However, we can also write that as a percentage, multiplying by 100, this would be plus or minus 3%. Okay? So your margin of error here is plus or minus 3%. Next of all then, a political party has claimed that it has the support of 23% of the electorate. Of the voters in the sample, above 234 stated that they would support the party. So that's 234 out of 1,111. Is this sufficient evidence to reject the party's claim at the 5% level of significance? Okay, so this is hypothesis testing. So first of all, we're going to state our null hypothesis. So our null hypothesis here would be that the political party has the support of 23% of the electorate. The alternative hypothesis, which we denote by H1, would be that the political party doesn't have the support of 23% of the electorate. So to calculate a uh, hypothesis test, we have to calculate a confidence interval. So the confidence interval is based on the margin of error and on the sample proportion. Now here, we had 234 voters out of a total of 1,111. So we're gonna calculate our sample proportion, which is denoted by p hat. So p hat here would be 234 over 1111 and this corresponds to 21 percent so from our sample 21 percent of the voters support this party now if we want to construct then a 95 percent confidence interval we use p hat plus or minus one over root n so here p hat worked out as 21 percent and your margin of error was plus or minus three percent so we can then construct an interval here. So 3% either side of 21 gives you 18 or 24. Now here our population value was 23% and 23% is within this interval. So because your population value is within your interval, this means you're going to accept the null hypothesis. So we're going to accept H0. So we can then say with 95% confidence that the political party has the support of 23% of the electorate.